What article of clothing did our women just start recently wearing after they got out of slavery that they didn't wear at any time in the past? I said the tights or whatever. We've been wearing booty shorts for a long time. <laughs> No, we've been we wearing. Have not. That was born we in 1962. <laughs> Y'all was wearing not. booty shorts in 1962. No, we have not. We have not. Oh no! 1962? No, no. No, no, booty shorts no. in 1962? No, you right? No, no, no. No, no. Let's correct that. I ain't seen no booty shorts no, in 1962. You know what? What's, what's your name, my sister? Devon Williams. Sister Williams, Sister Devon. Let me show you something that you're not doing right. According to the Bible, this is what my job is. All right? Deuteronomy chapter 22, verse 5. Have y'all heard this message before? Go ahead. Okay, Deuteronomy chapter 22, verse 5. I'm going to show you something. The book of Deuteronomy chapter 22, verse 5. The woman... The women, Sister De Devon, Sister Devon and Sister Rebecca. Rebecca, this is talking about you. That's your cousin. All right. So cousins. Oh, this your cousin. Okay. What's y'all relationship? This is my cousin. She's my. You talking about us? Yeah, y'all two. Yeah. That's my fiance. Fiance. Okay. All right. Your eyebrows went up when she said fiance. I want to see what she's like. Well, if y'all got to do that, it sounds like some 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 things need to be talked about a little bit more. Hey, Seventeen years. Seventeen years. Y'all should have been locked it down by now. It ain't locked down yet. All right, we want to talk about that too. But before we talk about that, let's talk about this. Read that again. Deuteronomy chapter 22, verse 4. Uh-huh. The woman shall not wear that which pertaineth unto a man. This is what the laws of God say. I'm playing peekaboo again. All right. It says the women should not wear that which pertaineth unto men. What article of clothing did our women just start recently wearing after they got out of slavery that they didn't wear? At any time in the past. I said the tights or whatever. We've been wearing booty shorts for a long time. <laughs> no, we've been we wearing. Have not. That was born we in 1962. Y'all was wearing booty shorts in 1962. No, no, no. 1962. Booty shorts in 1962. No, no, no. No, no. Let's correct that. I ain't seen no booty shorts no, in 1962. You know I have two 16-year-old granddaughters. They wear booty and shorts. They I know that. wear booty shorts. <laughs> I wore shorts. I was down here. Right. Yeah. That's what they, they in the sixties they was down there. In the eighties they got up here. And in twenty twenty five they all the way up here. Be glory and shame. A woman to just put on some underwear, some tights, some leggings, and just be walking out the house, booty just moving all over the place, and ain't nobody supposed to be looking at. Your camel toe, your booty, your breast, your nipples—all that is supposed to be for your husband to see. That's right. Not for another man to see. All of that is supposed to be exclusive. And you wonder why men get jealous out here. Because it's supposed to be a level of security inside of a relationship right. where there's something that's between me and my wife that's not accessible to anybody else. Right. It shouldn't even be seen by anybody else. But we live in a society that has perverted everything. They turn everything upside down. Give me, the, give me Isaiah 5 and 20. We're still making our way back to Deuteronomy 22. Give me Isaiah chapter 5, verse 20. Hey, my sisters, real quick, just listen to this last scripture. I'm going to just show you what happened here in America. What's your name, sis? Brittany. Sister Brittany and sister? Penny. Sister Penny. Penny, Brittany, Chris, Rebecca. The foremother, the foremother Rebecca coming back to her heritage. Y'all praise to the most high. This is what America has done to our people. This is why we're still in the lowest state, why we're the last hired, the first fired, why we get gunned down, why we live in the projects, why we can't seem to advance as a community. This is why, right here. Isaiah chapter 5, verse 20. Uh -huh. Woe unto them that call evil good. Good has been called evil in this place. Inappropriate attire by God's standard has been made appropriate by this man's standard. The one that brought us over here in chains. The one that enslaved us made evil things good. Read. And good evil. And the good things that God has established 
he has now called those things evil. I'm going to give you an example. The Bible says that homosexuality is evil. If I go out on a corner, or matter of fact, let's make it more realistic. If I go to my job, my job that I use to work for a living to pay my bills, and I start openly speaking about what God has called evil, homosexuality, what's going to happen to me on that job? Fire, yeah, yeah, yeah. Get fired. I'm gonna get fired. Yeah. That, job, that job is done, done. It's a wrap for me on that job. And that's an example of what the Bible just said. Woe to them that call good evil and evil good. They made it a, a evil thing for me to state what God said is good. God said it's good for a man and woman to be together. God said it's evil for a man and a man to be together. A woman and a woman to be together. But our men and our women not getting married, they're shacking up. And now women and women now are doing uh, legally what men and women are supposed to do. So this entire place has been turned upside down. Read on. That put darkness for light uh -huh. and light for darkness. Uh -huh. That put bitter for sweet Read. and sweet for bitter. All right, is that it? Yes, sir. Back to Deuteronomy 22 and 5. All right, so we're going to finish up on the attire, and I want to talk about the relationships inside the black community once again. Deuteronomy 22 and 5. The book of Deuteronomy. Chapter 22, verse 4. Read that. The woman shall not wear that which pertaineth unto a man. So, Sister Penny, Sister Brittany, God wants y'all in beautiful, modest dresses. But we can't see any of your shape. We want to get you a husband, and they're going to look at it every night, all night. But, but after that, nobody else is supposed to see it. Read. Neither shall a man put on a woman's garment. Sister Rebecca, if I was out here wearing a woman's, and this ain't no woman's garment. This is a warlike man's garment that goes down to the foot, just like our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. That's right. But our people so far from my heritage that we don't associate this with Christ. Isaiah 52 and 1. Yes, sir. Yeah, Isaiah 52 and 1. Then give me Revelation 1 and 14. Yes, sir. All right. But if I was out here in a woman's garment, say I put a sundress on. Would you sit here and listen to me teach the word of God? No, you wouldn't even stop. you probably put me on TikTok or World Star like these crazy Negroes out here. That's exactly what would happen. But this is what the Bible says. Read that. Isaiah chapter 52, verse 1. Uh -huh. Awake, awake, put on a beautiful... Well, the Bible says awake. Why do we have to wake up? Because we sleep. We all here talking about we woke. We didn't part of the conscious community. God says you sleep. If you got on the wrong garment, God says you still sleep. Read it again. Awake, awake, put on thy strength, O Zion. Put your strength on. Put on thy beautiful garments. So if you don't put your beautiful garment on, according to Deuteronomy 22 and 5, are you awake or are you asleep? You still sleep. So, Sister Rebecca, what's happening right now, you laying on the bed right now in the spirit, knocked out. And I'm right here at the edge of your bed, shaking you, trying to get you to wake up. Wake up, sister. Wake up. Put your beautiful garment on. You my sister, I love you as a sister, but the garment that you're wearing isn't beautiful according to God. Right. I want God to look down at one of his daughters and say, man, my daughter look beautiful today. Right. Like when my, I, got, I got two little girls. I got two little girls. You know what my daughter loves to do? Every time she gets her hair done, the first thing she wants to do is go find her daddy. To go show me her new hairstyle. Yeah. And don't know what I tell my daughter? Your hair looks beautiful. Oh man, you look so pretty. And in the spirit realm, your father in heaven wants to look down on you and say the same thing. Wow, my daughter looks beautiful. She put on her strength. She put on her beautiful garment. She dressed exactly as I told her to dress. Thus saith the Lord according to the law. Give me Zephaniah 1 and 8. We're going to come back to Revelation 1 and 14. All right. We're still talking about putting on the strength, putting on your beautiful garment. So a man going to dress like a man. You're going to dress like a warrior. A woman going to dress like a princess, a glorious princess, and not put man's attire on. It don't matter what they say in City Trends. It, what they say in JCPenney, you know, wherever you shop. Uh, Lowe's, Dillard's, Kohl's. They got the women's section and they say women's attire and they got women's pants. God don't give a damn about that. All God cares about is what did he already tell you in his word. Zephaniah 1 and 8. The book of Zephaniah, chapter 1, verse 8. Read that. And it shall come to pass. Uh -huh. And the day of the Lord's sacrifice. The day of the Lord's sacrifice is when you got to die for your own sins. He already sacrificed himself. So what's the day of the Lord's sacrifice is coming in the future? He ain't going to die again. 
We read earlier the brother had asked about sin. Can I still sin? Can I get away with it? No, the wages of sin is death. So when it's time for you to pay for that wage, that's the day of the Lord's sacrifice, when you got to pay for your own sins because you didn't accept the payment of Christ. Remember we said, the scripture said Christ suffered for us. So if you don't accept his suffering and now fix yourself up, now you got to suffer. You got to suffer for that day. Read on. That I will punish the princess. He's going to punish the princess, read. And the king's children. Uh-huh. And all such are clothed with strange apparel. You see who the people are that got to die? You got to die for what the white man told you that you could wear. The heathen that, that know you went into slavery for your sins wants you to keep sinning. They want you to stay in your sin. So if you follow the heathen to stay in your sin, you got to die for that. The heathen said, come as you are. Because they know the way that you are is in the midst of sin. And they want you to stay in your sins. They don't want you to repent from your sins. Now, Isaiah 52 and 1 said, awake, put on your strength, put on your beautiful garments, right? And we talked about a woman should dress modestly, all right? And you may not have seen a man dress like this before because we've fallen so far from our heritage. We've been nourished by this man right here. We've been taught everything by this man right here. Every Sunday, every Sunday, people get excited about what? What happens on Sunday? What happens after church? What happens after the eating? Oh, well, it's the wrong time of year. I'm sorry. No, wrong time of year. Er early in the year when it's still cold. What are everybody watching on TV after church? Football. Where we learn all this stuff from? This guy right here. Those are Greekish fashions. All right, let me show you how we dress according to the scripture. Isaiah, uh, Revelation 1 and 14. Uh, start at verse 11. Start at verse 11. The book of Revelation, chapter 1, verse 11. Uh -huh. Saying, I am Alpha and Omega. Jesus Christ is Alpha and Omega. The beginning of the end. The first and the last. Uh -huh. And what thou seest. This is what the Lord said. He said to John, what you see, do what with it? Write in a book. Write it down in a book. And that book became known as the book of Revelation. Read. And send it unto the seven churches which are in Asia, uh -huh. unto Ephesus, and unto Smyrna, and unto Pergamos. Verse 14. Verse 14. This is what John saw. I want y'all to listen to this real quick. His head and his hairs. Well, verse 13. You heard about the paps? Yes, sir. Verse 13. Uh -huh. Verse 13. And in the midst of the seven candlesticks. If you look closer on this image right here, you see these seven candlesticks? There's seven of them. That's called a menorah. Now the people that stole your heritage and try to pretend to be you can't even, they can't even count. The Bible says seven candlesticks. The Jewish people, the people that stole your nationality, they got nine candlesticks. Where they get that from? They got it from the same place that they got this image from. And they got it from the same place that they, where they got, that a woman could wear pants from. You know where that is? Satan himself. What? That's where they got it from. Read on. And in the midst of the seven candlesticks, one like unto the Son of Man, uh -huh. clothed with a garment. He was clothed with a garment down to the foot. Look at my garment. What is it close to? It's close down to my foot, read. With a garment down to the foot uh -huh. and girt about the paps. The paps is your midsection. Girt about the paps. With a golden girdle. With a golden girdle. So what you're looking at is a representation that's very similar to our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. This is us practicing what the Bible says to put on our beautiful garments. This is our strength right here. Putting on our beautiful garments, O nation of Israel. Read on. Verse 14. Uh -huh. His head. Now the head of this man, because Christ, we know Christ is not a so-called white man, right? Can we prove it out the Bible? Yeah. Good. Let's prove it. <laughs> his head and his hairs were white like wool. Who on this earth got woolly textured hair? <laughs> Us, so-called blacks, Hispanics, Native Americans. Yeah. All right, read on. As white as snow. Uh huh. And his eyes were as a flame of fire. Read on. And his feet. So Jesus Christ had feet, just like any other man. And what's on your feet? Skin. Skin is on your feet. The skin on your feet, doesn't it connect to the skin on the rest of your body? Skin is just one organ. You don't got like separate skin for one foot versus the other versus your elbow and your neck. It's all one organ. 
And, and it says, and his what? And his feet uh -huh. like unto fine brass. Christ had feet like fine brass. Brass is brown. But not only fine brass, as if it what? As if they burned in a furnace. If you burn anything in a furnace, what color does it turn? Black. Black. Uh, yeah. So what we start to understand is everybody in the Bible, everybody righteous that you read about in the Bible was black. And it says it straight up. Finish that. And his voice has the sound of many waters. And Christ spoke loud and he spoke with authority. That's right. He didn't speak like no mealy mouth homo homosexual that is, is confused about everything in their lifestyle. All right. He spoke with authority. All right, there's one more law I wanted to make sure I gave you. Exodus chapter 22, verse 16. Mm -hmm. All right? He, well, Hebrews 13 and 4. Hebrews chapter 13, verse 4. Uh -huh. Marriage is honorable. We, we got to bring honor back to the black community. That's right. We must bring honor back to the black community. And the only way for us to do that is to reinstitute the honorable things that God has already established. Right. Read it again. Marriage is honorable and all, uh -huh. and the bed undefiled. Read. But all among us and adulterers, God will judge. God will judge adulterers and who among us. If I'm having sex with a woman and I haven't made her my wife already, as soon as the mistake happened, I've now made a whore out of one of my own sisters. And that's how we got to start to see our women in our community. This is one of my sisters. This is the daughter of one of my brothers, part of my family. And if we treat each other like family, there's certain things that now become unacceptable. It's not acceptable for me to take one of my family members and then turn her into a whore. Or for me to now become a whore mother because I keep doing it time and time again. Exodus 22 and 16. The book of Exodus, chapter 22 and verse 16. Uh -huh. And if a man entice a mate. Hey, I want you to hear this one. This one's for y'all. This one's for y'all. That is not betrothed. If you entice a mate, so you spit game to that sister. She's not married already. And lie with her. And y'all lay down. Y'all have sex with each other. He shall surely endow her to be his wife. You got to make that sister your wife right away. That's what it looks like to bring honor to that. Make an honorable, an honest woman out of her. You lay down with her. You have sex with her. You marry her, not years later, not decades later, not one, two, three, nine kids later. Nah, right away, if, if, if that happened, that was a mistake. How do I fix that mistake? I gotta marry her now. That's my woman now, and I can't get rid of her. I can't drop her like a bad habit and then go pick up another one. These are the things that are needed in our community to fix our community. Nation is men leading by example. Nation is family. Nation is community. Nation is children with role models. 